composing gloves here. And this is another sound and synth basics. Today we're talking about the sine wave. What? So these have another name. They're also called sinusoidal waves if you want to be like fancy. If you take a trig, you're probably familiar with this. The sine wave uh, in sound design is somewhat similar to the to the number one or zero in math. You multiply any times anything times zero, you get zero. Multiply anything times one, you get that thing, whatever it was. So 2001 is two because you it's the same, it's the identity property. So the sine wave has some interesting math applications as well but it's great for using for analysis so what is it it is a single graph so if you go back to like a few videos ago it's a single graph of a circle it's essentially i picture them as right triangles moving in circles because of trigonometry so i i see it a little weird um if you take a trig you probably see it that way too so why is this important to us why is the sine wave important to us well this guy i forgot his first name by the name of Fourier. There's this thing called the fast Fourier transform. So every time, so let's look at this. We have a thing called a signal analyzer right here. So if I play some signal, we have this thing popping out. Now, the sine wave is nifty because you could pass a sine wave. I'm not sure for nonlinear systems. I haven't gotten to that part yet in my studies. But in linear systems, if you pass a sine wave through a, a linear system, you always get a sine wave out. So it's great for making uh, observations about systems. Uh, the most obvious thing about a sine wave is it's a single tone. And if we go to a frequency, a spectrum analysis, so this shows us our spectrum. I know we haven't talked about this yet, but I have a feeling you have some idea of what this is. So as you, whoops, here we have our spectrum. It is the only thing that is just a single tone. It is one tone. And that's all the jazz there is. So that's something else you need to be aware of. If there's any other tones, it's either your system is having anti-aliasing problems and that's because you're dealing with digital audio. You're dealing with analog audio, which can introduce a number of their own unique problems. But uh, ideally, it's just one tone, it's just a single tone. And it's unique because of that. There's no other tone because by definition, if there are more sine wave, if there are more tones, if it doesn't sound like a single tone, then it's not a si it's a multiple sine waves. So that's what I was going to get into with the fast forward transform. So there's a couple of these different transform things. I'm not going to like bog you down with all this DSP. Uh, all you need to know is that the sine wave is, uh, uh, is what we use to generally break down signals. There's other ways to break down signals using impulse responses. And there's, a lot, there's just a bunch of different ways. But we use this. And what you need to know is that every single one of these tones right here, like we see this big complicated tone, it sounds like this. Every single one of these red lines represents one sine wave tone at a different amplitude. Each of these sine wave tones has its own phase relationship. And when you add them together, they create a series of patterns because they're static relationship. And unless you're changing uh, frequency in certain areas of your spectrum, which, you know, is a viable thing like that could be a thing. So what we're doing is when we use like a filter, for example, we're changing the relative amplitude of particular sine waves in your spectrum. So when you stack them, so when you stack a whole bunch of sine waves on top of each other at different frequencies, which we haven't talked about yet, but at different frequencies in different amplitudes, so different volumes, so they go, so they might be oscillating at a different fr frequency, so faster or not so fast and the the faster ones the higher pitch ones are much smaller in amplitude they sum together a particular way and that's how you get your sounds all sound design there it was actually proven and there's there's a small debate uh with another mathematician by the name of leap leap I if i saw it in front of me i could say it i can see the word in front of me right now mathematicians that watch this video are going to be like slapping me they're going to be slapping their computer screen and be like, this guy. But uh, anyways, you could arguably generate any signal. You could take any complicated waveform. So this, this is not that complicated. Let's make a complicated waveform. Let's just go. You could take this and you could turn it into a bunch of sine waves. That was his, his idea. And a, technically a bunch of cosine waves, half sine waves, half cosine waves. Um, cosine waves are just sine waves with a 90 degree shift. You don't really need to worry about that, um, for the most part. But, uh, this is just stuff you need to be aware of when you're working with things, stuff that you need to be, you know, to know, not because it's going to influence what it's going to influence what decisions you make, but it's also information that you need to be conscious of. So, that you know, the tools you're working with, what their source is like, 
for example, I got to I got to for some reason I feel like I need to justify this information. So, if we have like a hammer and your hammer has a you need to know how your hammer was made and what it was made out of so that you don't hit something with a hammer and then your hammer breaks rather than the thing you're trying to break with the hammer. That's one of the things. So, the sine wave, you need to know about the roots and basics of your sine wave. That way uh, you know what you, you know what your tool is capable of doing. So, anyways, this four-year guy, his idea was you could rip this apart using nothing but sine waves. And the idea was you you take it apart and you put all these sine waves apart. And if we go over here to the spectrum, you actually see we're using the Fourier transform. We're using the discrete Fourier transform. That's pretty much the only one we really have the option to use because we're doing digital analysis, which is another topic. But anyways, when we play note... I keep wanting to push it up here. We see each individual sine wave. We see them all. And EQ does this. All your analyzers do this. And so there's a few other methods to it, but most the most popular is the Fourier fast transform. And it's taking the signal and it's splitting it apart into a bunch of these different waves. And then when you add them together at their correct amplitudes, you will get any signal. Now this, it's L-I-E-Z-P-I-E-G or something like that. Les, les peg. Les peg. I don't even know. But anyways, that guy said there's one problem. And that is, so, you know, we are approaching a limit. So this is a little bit of calculus for you. Um, I hope I don't lose you. So there's this idea called the limit where here's, let's say this is our limit and this is our curve. And it's going to get ever and ever and ever closer to this thing, but it's never going to reach it. And so theoretically, you'll never get there. Uh, so here we have a sine wave and as we add more and more and more sine waves, we'll approach this limit because we have this problem. So this is the problem. If I come over here, let me reset this to default. I'll show you the problem right now. Here's the problem. This, this right here is the problem. Let's zoom in. You might be saying, what's the problem? Well, using this method, let me zoom out. You see this right here? That's not a perfect corner. It's not perfect. As a result, this method theoretically can't produce corners, but it can become so close. It's like the limit is so close that it's like, it doesn't even matter. But uh, that was that guy's problem was the idea of corners. So just so you know, that's the thing. So a sine wave, back to sine waves, uh, they add together and they create all your sounds. All your sounds are sine waves, all of them. Like you could, you could take them apart. The idea is, and this is where synthesis comes from, is you take a complicated signal and you break it apart. And then all these different pieces, if you synthesizing, meaning add them together, you sum them together in their different phases, which is why phase is like so important, you will get your complicated signal back. That is the foundation of everything. It is the foundation of your EQ. It is the foundation of your, of the way your system produces audio. Like it's, Digital audio is founded upon when you want to take something apart and, and change something. So when you get into analog, the game changes a little bit, but it's relatively the same still. So uh, the sine wave, as you can see, is a pretty important dude. Like it's, it is everywhere. There is no sound except there be sine waves. So just so you know, I wanted, I wanted to cover this because it's something that I feel most people just don't appreciate as much as they should. They should, should. Anyways, so that's a sign. That's a little bit about a sine wave. Um, those are the main basics. That's the really important stuff. There's like even more things we could talk about trigonomic functions and stuff, but that's getting like way more into the math side. As far as from a sound design perspective, that's really the core of what you need to know about a sine wave. And the other thing is, when you pass through a system, you generally are gonna get. You should get a sine wave back out. So if we have like, uh, let's open up a cabulate a cab emulator. Where's hardcore? Hardcore. There's hardcore. Turn all the pedals off. You don't need to know what this does. It has an EQ in here that simulates a cabinet. If you pass our signal through it, uh, as you can see, it's working. Here's our sine wave. If we go up, this is a linear system and it will give us a sine wave back. Let's go down a few octaves. If we turn it disabled, it's slightly different. And that's because uh, you will detect patterns. Humans are really, really good at detecting patterns. So when you have a whole bunch of sine waves and they suffer a pattern and it, each sine wave, maybe they get progressively softer, which is pretty much what an EQ will do, as you can see by our settings here. 
um, with, of course, the cabinet mo um, modeling, they will apply a very slight change and we'll detect this change at, through this pattern of sine waves. So another interesting thing, and we'll get into this with the harmonic series, is the sine wave, when you understand it from a harmonics perspective, it's sort of like music theory, except for like really tiny music theory. That's the way I think of it, because it's they've got relationships of thirds and fourths and fifths and octaves, and it's really interesting. So we're going to talk about that stuff later. Anyways, I've talked a little too much about sine waves for the moment being. Now, at least you have some information about it. You know what, it, what that deal is all about. Um, shoot, if we took simple harmonic motion like atoms and broke it down, we could go on to into crazy extremes and say that you're made of sine waves and it could just get really wild. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments, subscribe, and have a blessed day. Opposing worlds. Reversing.